A philosopher once said that we eat to live. We don't live to eat. And Paul in 1 Corinthians says that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit and that we don't belong to ourselves, but that we belong to God. So what are you feeding your temple? This is the question that Dr. Febe Terrero is gonna help us answer tonight. She has a very unique perspective that takes a look at our Christian identity before anything else when we are trying to change our lifestyle and health goals. Are you ready? Let's get into it. Dr. Terrero, thank you so much for coming on the program. I'm really looking forward to this conversation centered around nutrition. And I think the first thing I want to ask you is what is your philosophy around health and wellness and nutrition? Before the camera started rolling, um, you talked about a podcast that you have that's called um, Being Your Weight, yeah. correct? Mm -hmm. And so that led me to ask you because I, I you know, it was very interesting uh, title that you've given your podcast. And so I'm just curious and I I'm sure the viewers are going to be curious about your philosophy around uh, weight loss, diet, exercise, lifestyle, all of the things. All right, fantastic. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. <laughs> really excited to be here. Um, yes, yeah, so I have a podcast called Being Your Weight. Transformate mm -hmm. al instante en tu peso ideal. Mm -hmm. So it's a bilingual podcast mm -hmm. where comes in my philosophy in terms of uh, being healthy and a healthy lifestyle and one of the things that have been um, at the base of everything I've done for the past few years is your identity. Mm. So how do you see yourself in this yeah. overweight body, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Who do you feel like you are? Who do you think you are? What are the emotions that come in? What do you tell yourself? You know, yeah. what are the conversations that you're having mm -hmm. with yourself? Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to being overweight or wanting to change your lifestyle, all that part comes into play because if you haven't, if you're not working on your identity of who you are, it's almost like you're trying to be someone that you're not. Mm. Okay. And so you want to be this weight, but you actually see yourself overweight. And so how are you going to make it there <laughs> if you're still here, right? So yeah. it's that journey um, of transforming yourself, yeah. really. That's why the second part is, you know, tra tra transform. So transform yourself into yeah. the weight yeah. that you want to be. So being your weight kind of carries um, that. Okay. Yeah. So then how do, you, how do you approach a client who is, has some, you know, particular weight goals, and, and they come to you for advice and for counsel and for nutritional right uh, support, addressing that issue of identity in them. So how how do you, what is your process for doing that? Right. Um, so it's funny that you mentioned because a lot of my clients come thinking about that I'm going to give them what to eat, eat this, <laughs> not that, you know. <laughs> And when we start our sessions, they realize it's less to do about that and mm. more to do about you. Mm. And so we start with, you know, what are you, you, how do you, what do you say to yourself when you look at yourself in the mirror? Mm. What are the words that you say to yourself? And what we discover is that we tend to be nicer to other people <laughs> <laughs> than ourselves. And so, yeah. oh my God, look at this. I look terrible. I want my waist to look this way. Mm. You know, this is too big and this is too small. And so the first thing that I, I do for them is bring awareness about okay. what are those thoughts, what mm -hmm. are those mm -hmm. things that you tell yourself because the more you're aware of that, yeah. then the more you're able to catch yourself when that's happening right. and right. kind of re reverse it, right? Go back to, okay, wait a minute. Is that true that I yeah. look like, you know, whatever? <laughs> so let me see how I can. And then yeah. that in turn, when you start seeing yourself different, you start acting differently. Yeah, It's just how humans are <laughs> and so then when we go into that which is one two three maybe several sessions mm -hmm. because life happens and then you right. kind of you know come back to that then we bring into food okay mm. well what food am I choosing yeah. but how am I arranging my environment but that all comes after you're working on your identity okay because who you are depends mm -hmm. on so your actions depend on who you are okay Okay. And so if you're not working on who you are, your actions are going to be, that's why sometimes it's so difficult because you are this person and you want to do this. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just, it's, you have a hard time right. um, trying right. to achieve that. So. Right. How long does it generally take or is it really client dependent yeah, in terms it, of reaching that point where they see themselves mm -hmm. the way that they want to be? Right. 
it de it does depend on the person. Okay. Um, some people go through the process, and you know, it's I, in my experience, at least four weeks. Four weeks. Mm. This is like the minimum. Okay. Um, but uh, some people take longer because this is the thing. We've been. We're not going to say our age here, right? But you've lived this <laughs> life, you know, for X amount of years. And now you're trying to flip it. Yeah. It's not going to be, you know, it's not an overnight thing. Right? Yeah. And so you need to practice. And so that's where the coaching comes, you know, when you mm -hmm. have guidance and someone that you can rely on and someone that you can say, listen, I tried this, but it didn't really work. And OK, let's find another way. So and um, uh, along with it comes uh, homework. Right. Mm -hmm. Do this, do that. <laughs> so it's a it's a whole process. And so I think um, in the past few years, my, my clients are surprised because they they think it's just going to be like. You know, yeah. take this bill, do this, <laughs> and it's like, no, this is your life. Yeah, this is lifestyle changes. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So yeah. seven, uh, four weeks is like the minimum, but I've had clients for twelve weeks. Yeah. You know, and they get it and they go back, yeah. and so it depends on the person, really. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's really interesting. Um, this identity piece that you're talking about, because what it reminds me of is the conversation I had last week with Christina Verboven, and we were talking about emotional intelligence. And she was talking about how, right, when we have some strong emotion, mm -hmm. and maybe that's, you know, it also gets a little bit at, at that, you know, what are you feeling as you're looking at yourself in the mirror, right? And you're, you were talking about the self-awareness, right? Mm -hmm. And then what are you telling yourself, which was another mm -hmm. piece of this, you know, sort of emotional intelligence. And then regulating, which I feel like, mm -hmm. you know, some of it comes into play as you're working with people to, to get to uh, their identity in the way that they see themselves. Mm -hmm. So I just see, you know, the, that's, there's a lot of emotional mm -hmm. intelligence that comes into play into this very, uh, very topic. Um, so, so talk to me about um, what is the, the biggest struggle? And I know you said, you, t you know, you deal with your clients first on their identity, but what seems to be not related to identity the biggest struggle that your clients seem to have, you know, as a, as a general rule, maybe not all of them, but just uh, the majority of them? Well, what on the top of my head is motivation. Mm. People mm -hmm. just feel like they're not motivated to yeah. do it or they don't have enough discipline to do it. Um, so for the most part, it's people that they, they want to do something um, they know what, which is something that I tell every time I do a, a talk, I'm like, everybody knows that eating vegetables is better than eating junk food. Right. There's, I don't have to, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. not, you don't need a podcast for that, right? So, but the idea is, why am I not doing what I say I'm going to do? Yeah. And a yeah. lot of the things that come in the conversation is the motivation part. Um, so motivation and, and discipline usually. But then again, that's tied into it goes back to yeah. your identity. Yeah. It's who you are. Right. If you don't even if you don't see yourself in a certain way or in that way that would give you mm -hmm. that impulse, your motivation is going to lack because on the one side you want to be this way, and on the other side you're reprimanding yourself mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. literally hating yourself yeah. for being where you are at the moment. And so mm -hmm. motivation is difficult, <laughs> you know, when you're doing that. Um, but if you and when you start seeing yourself mm -hmm. differently, then you get ideas, then you're like, hmm, maybe I could do that. What if yeah. I could do that? And then nobody has to put a fire under your feet. Like right. you, you just go ahead and do it. So, um, but definitely uh, motivation and discipline are okay. one of the main ones. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, and I think that's that's a big one. And I'll I'll come back to that idea of of motivation. But I wanted to ask you. Because in a lot of the talks I have here with you know different people that come and we talk about different topics. Um, is there a, a specific kind of overarching Bible verse that guides your work in this area? Right. One of the ones that I use the most, and I think it brings everything together, is you know our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That in itself, it's <laughs> like okay. So how are you treating your temple? Yeah. So what's going on there, right? Yeah. Um, a lot of times we think of. Uh, more um, external things like, oh, you know, regular things like smoking or drinking mm -hmm. or, you know, drugs and things like that. It's like, oh, I don't do drugs. And yeah, but, you know, you're eating foods that mm -hmm. you certainly know that are not good for you, right? Yeah. And so how are you treating um, that? And 
for a lot of my clients, it goes into their families too. Most of them yeah. have children. Yeah. And right. then you're creating this environment for your children too. So, but definitely that one brings all yeah. the points. Yeah, the temple together. of the Holy Spirit. So here's, you know, and, and we were sort of talking about this before the cameras were rolling because <laughs> we had, you know, sort of different perspectives on the same issue of how, how do we uh, get healthy, right? And, and um, do we bring to bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which one of which is self-control. And again, we were talking about self-control with um, Christina last week. And so we had a kind of a, <laughs> a difference of opinion a little bit. I think, I think we actually are in agreement on this. I don't think yeah. we are veering you know, too far off. But I think one of the things that, um, that you mentioned is, and with reason, and so my suggestion to Dr. Terrero is that as we are trying to get healthier, as we are trying to build better habits in our lives so that we are eating you know, better, and then of course you know, it translates into a lower weight, um, is that we, can, we have access to the power of the Holy Spirit. But that sometimes, particularly you said with your uh, Christian clients, that they a little bit abdicate responsibility for, um, you know, for what they need to do because they feel as though, you know, the Holy Spirit is going to do everything for them. So talk to us a little bit about that and, and the clients that, that you've worked with. <laughs> and <laughs> so we, we, you know, I, I think we can, you know, access the power of the Holy Spirit. Dr. Terrero thinks there's a little bit that you can do if you're trying to lose weight. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> you know, I, I do believe in, in the fruits of the spirit. I mean, of course. Um, in my experience with clients that are, and I, I mean, I've worked with all types of clients, right? So like uh, from like teenagers um, to pastors, mm -hmm. you know, people that are Christians, people that are yeah. not Christian. So it, it, I have a different range of, of people. Um, and so what I've seen is that they tend to relay more rely more mm -hmm. on the somebody external to come mm -hmm. and save me from this thing that I'm not doing. Yeah. And yeah. so when you have that mentality that you're going to have in a savior per se, we're not talking about the savior, right? Right, right, but right. When right. you have this idea that somebody's gonna come and do for you what you have to do for mm -hmm. yourself, you it's really difficult to get that done yeah. because yeah. You are the one that's here, mm -hmm. right? And right. we are the ones that are given the tools, like, you know, so, to do this or that, depending on what your goals are. And so you're going to have a challenge. Yeah. Because it, it, there's a part that you have to do. Mm -hmm. Always. There's yeah. a part that you have to do. There's a reason why we're flesh. Right. You right. know, we, we do all this stuff. <laughs> you know, we're mechanics. We, right. we have systems in our bodies. And so... When you rely a lot on uh, just that, then it means that you're taking off your responsibility. Mm -hmm. And when you don't take responsibility for where you are, yeah. that's yeah. a really difficult part to be in, which is, you know, in parentheses, one of the things that I deal with my, my clients. Responsibility. You're responsible. Right. right. We are responsible because mm -hmm. we are the ones that are making yeah. choices, right? Yeah. And yeah. so that's where we were a little bit like, I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> <laughs> because you can't pray enough to have the spirit do what you need to do. Right. It's just, you know what I mean? You can yeah. have the ability to yeah. have that power. And, 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 and I think it comes a lot in the uh, knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. The people that you meet and stuff like that. Um, but if, if you're not doing that part, then, you know, then it's like, oh, he didn't help me enough because yeah. I couldn't do it. Right. You know, but that's not necessarily true. Right. So. Right. No. And I, I, I love that. And I think... <clears throat> and again, I say we're we're, we're not in disagreement re technically because, you know, we understand as human beings that the the Holy Spirit can give us the power, but you know you're still the one putting the spoon in your <laughs> in your mouth, right? It's your hand, it's your arm, it's whatever you have access to. So a lot of that work that we need to do in terms of our nutrition and our health, you know a lot of it is what we are doing, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. how we are proceeding with all of this knowledge right. that we have. And I feel like there is so much information around nutrition. Okay. There are so many diets. I mean, yeah. if you Google nutrition, yeah. millions of results come up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and they have like the, no, the carb diet and the all meat diet and the, this diet. 
you know, it's just like an over an overabundance mm -hmm. of information. And so I think part of why I wanted to invite you is to sort of sort through mm -hmm. a lot of that noise, and some of it tends to be a lot of noise, and kind of get at the heart of what's behind the unhealthiness. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, so I love this idea that you're talking about tackling the identity first mm -hmm. and then, you know, dealing with our food choices. Right. So um, speaking about all of the noise that's out there, um, what is some, uh, what are some of the sort of uh, advice that's really not helpful mm -hmm. that you find? that sometimes people cling to because they think, oh, if, you know, if I do this, then that's going to get me to where I want to be in terms of my health goals. What are, what are some of the things? What's the noise mm. that, that you consider? <laughs> <laughs> There's so many things. I, you know, I feel for my clients. I feel yeah. for people because there's so much information out yeah. there. And some of it is good, and most of it is really not. And yeah. so... For the layman, like they said, for the normal person that's just, you know, looking yeah. at social media, making a decision yeah. is, is, you know, it's just so astronomically almost impossible because you have so many avenues. In terms of, like, what doesn't work, um, I will tell you what works. Okay. Because I think that will take uh, the, right. the rest of it <laughs> out, out of the table. Um, there hasn't been any study, to my knowledge. Okay that states that eating foods from whole, right? Mm -hmm. Vegetables and eating fresh mm -hmm. is dangerous. Right. <laughs> There's none of that. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And so when you go back to, okay, so what should I do? This is what I tell most of my clients. Just, if you stay on that lane, you can free, <laughs> listen, you can do you can not necessarily forget about it because then you have your body. Every right. body is different. Mm -hmm. What works for you in terms of like some people can handle beans, for example. Mm -hmm. Although people can handle beans. Some people can handle fiber. Other people yeah. can't. So, but when you stay on that lane, you mm -hmm. really um, shut off most of the noise that's out there. Yeah. You know, eat this, eat that, you know, drink this, don't drink that. Um, so I would say what works is staying on whole foods, mm -hmm. meaning people... Uh, people um, <laughs> foods that are not processed right on processed foods mm -hmm. vegetables mm -hmm. and fresh okay let me I'm gonna I'm just gonna want for you know our viewers processed foods just yes guide us what are processed foods right so that we're understand what we're talking about right so process is like a spectrum right mm -hmm. processed foods is like a spectrum for example um, so rice there's rice, whole rice, right? Mm -hmm. That's not processed. There's a little bit of process to it because they got to clean it and mm -hmm. wash it and do all this stuff, okay? Yeah. So then that's part. And then you have something like rice cakes, mm -hmm. which is more processed than regular mm -hmm. rice, right. right? So now we're moving up the spectrum of the process. All right, which is a little bit better because, you know, you're not, um, there's some fiber in it still, something like that. And then you have rice flour. Mm -hmm which mm -hmm. is completely different yeah. from what the original rice looks like. Yeah. And so the more, um, the more boxed the ingredients are, yeah. the more processed they tend to be because right. they need you know, shelf life and all mm -hmm. these things. Mm -hmm. um, when I guide my clients in like, going to the supermarket, I advise them to stay on the sides of the supermarket as opposed to the middle. Yeah. Because in the middle is where you have all the boxes, all mm -hmm. this stuff. As much as it's whole, it's less whole. Mm -hmm. Like uh, an apple juice is never going to be an apple. Right. So right. It, it can be straight from the apple, which might be good, mm -hmm. but it's never going to be an apple, mm -hmm. right? And so it's the idea of eating the foods that are, look uh, in their original form. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So that's more on process. And then process is everything that you, most of the things that you see in boxes yeah. are, are processed foods. So yeah. Yeah. that's like the general idea there's so many foods in the market and there's right. some things that might be you know healthier than others but in the general sense that's okay. the idea for processed foods and okay. then you have like potato chips which is completely <laughs> junk food right? right and then you have you know all these you know snacks that are completely mm -hmm. yeah has have nothing to do right. with the original <laughs> um and made up right right this cheese component with this you know i one of the things that i don't want to take too long on this but one of the ex exercises that i do for my clients is you know, I can't get rid of these chips. And I said, you know what, let's get the chips. 
let's see, what, what other chips are you? Oh, these are, you know, whatever, healthy, because, you know, marketing. Mm -hmm. Low fat, omega-3, <laughs> all this stuff that they put at the farm, which I tell, don't believe that. Um, let's flip it. Let's see, the, let's see the ingredients. Yeah. What's on the ingredients? Oh, is this, oh, do you know what that is? No. Oh, me neither. I don't know. <laughs> oh, oh, yellow five. Yellow five. Which one? What yellow is this? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. We have, you know, this is a, a, a product that is completely processed. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, so you were, I, I wanted to pause you, but you were continuing, you know, to talk about, um, you know, the things that your clients can do and, you know, which is great advice for our viewers as well if they're interested in this topic. Um, um, talk to me in addition to kind of the noise that's, you know, that's out there. There's a lot of stuff currently in the news. Um, two things I wanted to, your opinion on. One is intermittent fasting, mm -hmm. uh, which is, seems to be all the rage um, and a lot of people have been doing it for a long time and they um, actually you know think that it's a great way to you know to manage your your weight and then the other thing that I want you to, to touch on is uh, the diabetes medications that are actually being used off like off the off shelf label, yeah. off, right mm -hmm. off label mm -hmm. uh, in order for people to lose weight again you know it goes back to this wanting things to be done quickly right. as opposed to working right. <laughs> on it. Uh, but, but tell me your thoughts on both of those things. Okay. Um, so intermittent fasting. Mm -hmm. I want to start with that. Um, so there was an idea before like 2013 that if you stop eating, like you have to eat more frequently. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Eat right. Every five three times. Yeah, five <laughs> times a day. You got to eat, eat, eat so that your right. metabolic yeah. rate is increased. No, it's not true. Like, we know that's <laughs> it's not how it works. Um, the whole idea be behind intermittent fasting is that when you restrict the time where you eat, mm -hmm. you will eat less. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's one part. Yeah. The other part is that when you are not eating, you are allowing your body to do this all this cleanup. Mm -hmm. And that the longer you don't eat, mm -hmm. the more into cleanup you go. Right. And right. so now the studies have shown is that when you have these periods that you're not eating, your body really is able to not just like clean like, you know, the table, but really dig into mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. any cells that are dead that are just mm -hmm. wandering around. Mm -hmm. um, it activates this mechanism for um, kind of a lookout um, to, to subtract these things that can be harmful to your body. Mm -hmm. And so now the idea is that it does help um, um, it does work. People mm -hmm. have seen it for losing weight and for dealing with a lot of chronic diseases as well. Mm -hmm. um, they have like different times, you know, 16 hours, 16, eight, right. 14. Right, right. The idea behind that is that the longer you do it, the more you have that benefit. Mm -hmm. But there's, it depends on the person. It depends on their lifestyle. You know, right. if you have kids, it might be difficult to do that as opposed to a single person just, right. you know, regulating their food at home. Um, but I do it. It's great. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just really yeah. gives, it gives your body pause mm -hmm. so that your body can do what it needs mm -hmm. to do as opposed to yeah. working all the time. This is a great, one of those other things that I, I love how science catches up with scripture right. yeah yeah <laughs> right it's like this yeah. thing where all of a sudden you know like intermittent fasting becomes this like hot thing right. to be able to control your weight right and you know fasting is part of our you know our, our christian faith mm -hmm. it's just you know in there jesus fasted for 40 mm -hmm. days it was a part of his li lifestyle uh, but now we actually have scientific proof mm -hmm. that this works and it does all of these amazing right. benefits uh, right. for, for our body. Right. So you would say, you would come down on the side that fast, intermittent fasting yes, works. It and works. it's a good thing for us to do. It's good to give to your do. body rest. And if you also think about how our ancestors, ancestors mm -hmm. lived, nobody had all this food available all yeah. the time. Yeah. There's, there's none of that. Yeah. I mean, not, maybe not all of them were starving all the yeah. time, yeah. which is one of the myths that's mm -hmm. been debunked mm -hmm. that eating you know intermittent fasting will um you know kind of mess with your metabolism and stuff like that that's that doesn't really work that way anymore <laughs> right and so the idea is that it used to it, 
people did it in the past and so how come you know what's going on now that all of a sudden it's going to wreck us and, and what we've learned is that it doesn't yeah it actually helps um, okay so all right yeah so intermittent fasting <laughs> they can fast and pray right exactly <laughs> and both are beneficial one right, for your body right. and one for your spirit definitely <laughs> definitely so talk to us about the diabetes medications that are all over the news right now that's you know it's interesting how if i don't pre i don't prescribe medication right mm -hmm. so i'm a doctor but i don't prescribe um but i believe in medicine i believe right. that if you have a certain condition right you can definitely there's a reason why we have all these scientists you know right you know mm -hmm. burning what is it the, the candle <laughs> burning the candle at both hands <laughs> just to find you know how things work so that's right. fantastic the danger is when we extract it from mm -hmm. that part into right. now everybody should be yeah, on it. Right. It so you're talking about it, it's okay for people who have diabetes to take these medications because they have proven to be helpful for them, but then it's it's the the off label use. Right, right. But even more so I would say, you know, diabetes is an interesting chronic disease. Mm -hmm. um, one of the talking about myths is that it was genetic. You know, if mm -hmm. your mom has diabetes, then you right. have diabetes. Okay, well, if you eat like your mom ate, yeah. if you drink, but you, you know what I right. mean? So that's, it's a behavior that's passed through yeah. generations as yeah. opposed to a gene, you know, that actually like yeah. a diabetes gene. Yeah, and it's a great one for us to, to talk about, and I don't mean to interrupt you, but because, I mean, my mom died of complications from diabetes, and it seems to be prevalent in the Latino and, mm -hmm. and black communities. And so this is something that, that's very close to our heart mm -hmm. because it is um, such a big issue, a chronic disease within our community. So right. go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I know. And, um, and thank you for pointing it out because that I, you know, most of my clients are, you know, Latinos and they come yeah. with that idea. Yeah. Ah, you know, my mom had it and I have it, but you know, it's just meant, you know, it's supposed to happen. and. Uh, no, it's not supposed yeah. to happen. If you change your habits, if you change your lifestyle, there's no gene. And even more so, I would say, I know this is not the topic of the program, but even the idea that genes rule, right. are, it, it's mm -hmm. debunked. This is okay. not true. Right. It's the environment. Mm -hmm. So even if you may have a gene that may predispose you to that, if you change your environment, you can make that gene quiet. Yeah. And it does not have to express itself, right? right. And so... Um, so going back into the, the medication, yes, this type of medications work for people that, you know, are diabetics and stuff like that. But the idea that now everybody that's, you know, I mean, there's one billion, there are two billion people mm -hmm. overweight in mm -hmm. the world. So yeah. imagine, are we going to yeah, give, yeah. you know, two billion? Right. That's not, you know, and like 48% yeah. of, of Americans, 42% so are obese. Right. Are we going to put half of the population right. on this medication? <laughs> you know, because, you know, it's, in, right. it's unrealistic. And then there's the short-term um, idea of the medication mm -hmm. where most of the studies that have been done are very short. Yeah. And so yeah. the yeah. effects of when you start, actually, one of the black box re recommendation of these drugs is you never, it's for life. Right, right. That's what I had read about <laughs> yeah. them, that you, yeah. That That's it. Like, mm -hmm. you're done. And, and every time that you put a drug for life, you're taking the responsibility out of the yeah. person to make yeah. the necessary changes, you know, right. to, to do that. It's um, a blood pressure medication. Mm -hmm. Has there any? Has there been any decrease in blood pressure since we've mandated right. blood pressure? <laughs> no, it hasn't. Because at the root of it is changing your lifestyle. And yeah. so if it's hard, for, if your blood pressure is 200 over 150, mm -hmm. yes, take the medication because yeah. you want yeah. to, you know, right. Right. but then make a plan so that mm -hmm. you're weaned off of it and so mm -hmm. that you can with lifestyle kind of like manage this so one of the things that i see with this medication is just that it's too it's, it's too uh put too simplistic out there mm -hmm. for people yeah and so and unregulated by a doctor right, right. most of the time you just take your shot come back if you have symptoms that's it yeah. um, one of the things that I've, I've i've heard about this too is that um it's too the doses are too big mm -hmm. and so you know you pump yourself of something mm -hmm. you drop 30 pounds in 30 days your body doesn't know how to react to yeah, that, you know? And so yeah, there's yeah. a lot of, you know, before you go into, if you're thinking about going into this medication, um, yeah. think, talk to your doctor. But I would say even go deeper than your doctor. <laughs> because for the most part, 
Yeah. Doctors are, you know. Yeah, for the money. They have their the pharmaceutical the, companies. They have or, like yeah. $72 million yeah. just for advertisement to doctors. Mm -hmm. This pharmaceutical company that deals with this medication yeah. only. So, yeah. you know, do your research as well. And also know that um, lifestyle comes before anything. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I know, and, and it's this idea, right, um, unfortunately, I feel like it, it, it permeates every aspect of, of our lives here in America. It's like we want a quick fix for everything. Yeah. Um, and, you know, as Christians, we know that there are no quick fixes because even when God is working with us, it's a process. It's a process. process. <laughs> it's a process. Everything <laughs> is a process. Even as we are trying to get healthy and trying to eat better, right. that is also a process right. Right. in our lives. Even if you look at, I'm sorry to interrupt no, you, no, but no. even if you look at nature, mm -hmm. we don't go from fall to summer <laughs> right away. No, it's a process. Right. You know, the leaves fall and yeah. this happen yeah. and it starts raining. So you see, like, even when you um, put a, a grain of corn in the ground mm -hmm. it doesn't grow up right away there's there's a process yeah. to life there's a process and people just want to skip the process and just yeah. get to the results and then right. you know they find that it's not so nice when they get there because right. then you know you have all these side effects that you have to right. deal with as well or or it's unsustainable it's so you may be able to exactly. to get there quickly but then you find your body is is fighting it, right. right? And let's talk a little bit about that. What happens when we put our bodies into, let's say, a very restrictive, um, you know, dietary state, wanting that quick fix? Right. So, I mean, the, the, the body is very kind. You know, mm -hmm. we have a very kind body that just allows us to do whatever we want, in mm -hmm. essence, right? <laughs> Go ahead, do it. You know, it's fine. <laughs> and you get results. Um, the idea is that, is that if you live in a very um, restrictive caloric uh, deficit, mm -hmm. um, for example, for women, it's way detrimental. I mean, your reproductive system shuts down, mm -hmm. just just that alone, yeah. um, because you now you're in survival mode, right? Um, and so when you're doing these really um, strict diets um, with very, very, very low um, caloric intake, that's a little bit challenging. And then when you go off, then what? Mm -hmm. Because the idea is that eventually you go off. Right. <laughs> right? The, the whole idea is eventually you can't yeah. just eat 300 calories a day. Right, right. Eventually something happens where yeah. you go off of this. And so what happens is just the body comes, comes back to it and you gain more. Yeah. When you come yeah. off of that. Right. Because now you have no regulation. You just... This is a free-for-all, yeah. right? There are yeah. no steps. There, there was no process to, okay, this is how I'm going to do my meals. This is mm -hmm. how much it's supposed to be. Now now you're coming off of, I haven't eaten this much for this long, and I'm just going to eat everything under the right. sun. And so, yes, the study says yeah. every time you go on a diet, you gain about 30% more yeah. when you go off. Right. And so right. It, it, diets don't work. Mm -hmm. So your program is not about d specific yeah. diets? Mm -hmm. No, I don't do diets. Mm -hmm. Diets don't work. Right. They don't work. It's just that the science says it. They don't work. The lifestyle works. And so what I always try to achieve with my clients is that to um, just put it in them a seed of how can I improve my lifestyle, right? Mm -hmm. And some clients that I've worked with like, you know, a couple of years ago still do some of the things yeah. that we did in the yeah. program because it's instilled into that. And yeah. so... It's not necessarily just eat this, not that, but look at what you're eating and how is that working for you? Yeah. How do you feel? You know, sometimes they need information. And so I give the information. Here mm -hmm. it is, like reading the label. Yeah. How do you feel about eating that stuff? And the idea yeah. is that the more you know about mm -hmm. that stuff, especially if it's, hard, if it's harmful, yeah. the less you do it. So I don't have to tell you not to do it. Right. A piece right. of paper doesn't have to tell you. You don't need a list on the refrigerator. <laughs> you know, right? Because right. your, your, your instincts um, are more uh, developed and mm -hmm. you start getting these voices that are telling you voices, yeah. you know, but that instinct <laughs> right. of like, right. oh, okay, wait a minute. I know right. pizza, it's not so good. Bueno, uh, maybe I can have like a slice. Okay, fine. I'm not going to have five because yeah. I already know. That is not even that good for me. So right. you start doing that stuff. So it's right. not about a strict diet. It is just mm -hmm. having a lifestyle that um, supports just being mm -hmm. more healthy and yeah. more whole. And that changes your family. That changes mm -hmm. your state of being. Yeah. I mean, I tell people I've had clients that have lost like 35, 25 pounds, 
to clients that have left a toxic relationship. Yeah. Because when you start seeing yourself differently, yeah. you start acting differently, right. and then you choose differently. Yeah. And so yeah. it's a yeah. whole holistic way of, okay. of approaching that. Yeah, I, I love that idea. Um, I want to turn my attention to the <laughs> books that are on the table right now. You wrote these books. Uh, one version is in Spanish, another in English. Yeah. Tell our, our viewers sort of what the the what the takeaway, the big takeaway from these books right. uh, are. So surprisingly, is identity, right? <laughs> is that how you see yourself mm -hmm. will change the way that you act. Yeah. That would yeah. happen, right? Yeah. And so what we do in the book, and I wrote it with my um, mentor, Rob White, as well, is that you start being aware mm -hmm. of what are you telling yourself when you look at the mirror. Yeah. And then I go into, okay, so what things can you do once you start mm -hmm. seeing yourself differently? Mm -hmm. You know, you can, you know, choose a cookie or a banana or stuff like that. Um, and um, how do you see your family, right? What does being healthy means to you? Because, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you know, surprisingly, people don't know. Yeah. You know, they're <laughs> like, oh, so, well, oh, I want to be, so what do you want to lose weight? Oh, because I want to be healthy. Okay, well, everybody wants to be healthy. So more specifically, what yeah. are you trying, what are you seeing yourself like? What's the yeah. vision that yeah. you have for yourself? Oftentimes it's about a number. Yes, exactly. And then and then the idea is it, when, when you say, okay, so it's about a number, but what's that number going to do for you? Yeah. How are you going to feel when you get to that number? Because we think it's a number, but it's the feeling behind the number. Yeah. Yeah. It's what yeah. you're going to yeah. feel when you get right. to that, right? right. It's not right. just, you know, I'm about 80 pounds. No, it's how people are going to see me different. I'm yeah. going to be able to wear different clothes. I'm going to be able to stand straighter. I'm not going to be um, uh, ashamed of when I walk mm -hmm. into a room. Mm -hmm. people, so it's a lot more of that as opposed mm -hmm. to, you know, just like, you know, whatever, X amount of weight. And so that's what we dive into. It's a very short book, very yeah. easy read, but it's very concise on those points. Yeah. And where could someone find the books if they wanted to uh, after they watch the program right so they can find it on amazon okay yeah so amazon okay. so you can there you go, go. Losing, amazon. <laughs> losing weight can be your fate you can go into amazon you can get it um like i said it's a it's a very short book but i'm you know people can read it in one afternoon okay. but it's just really i even go back to I'm like oh wow that was a good point yeah. you know <laughs> because it, it being overweight in in in, in losing weight is it's a whole spectrum of things yeah. and i think yeah. one of the things that has happened lately is that it's been so simplistic mm -hmm. yeah or uh, you know the into one little thing yeah um yeah. medication for example oh, yeah. is this thing that's yeah. going to but there's a lot that comes with it i mean yeah. for most of my clients they've been overweight for years right, right so that's right. not just you know one pill solution this yeah. is a whole environment how you relate right. to yourself to your mother to your siblings to your kids and so um, we go into that <laughs> tell i'm very passionate about that <laughs> <laughs> yes, and it comes through, and I, I love it. Um, I mean, we could spend hours, yeah. you know, talking about this topic. So I read a lot, um, you know, about habits uh, as well and, and how, you know, habits can, can come into play when you're trying to do this, you know, as you mentioned earlier, uh, maybe on camera or not. Uh, but the, the choices that you make to bring into your house, you know, how do you, how do you set up your environment mm -hmm to help you succeed, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so not bringing in the cookies or the yeah. ice cream and all of these things, or if you know you're gonna be in a place where there's gonna be a lot of food, um, maybe eat a little something beforehand so that you're not starving when you get there mm -hmm. and eat you know, potentially something all healthy. So all of these ways that we can um, just set ourselves up for success right. as we're trying to, um, to achieve our health goals. Right. Any last words before we finish to our audience? Be kind to yourself. Just be kind. You have the body that you have for a reason and it made, it served its purpose, right? Oh. And so be kind to yourself, love yourself. And you see a lot comes from changing that perspective on how you see yourself and how you talk to yourself. So be kind, be acceptance of where you are at the moment and um, I, I use a lot of this gold green, right? Which goes to what you were talking about, uh, uh, emotional intelligence, just mm -hmm. coming to that place of breathing. Mm -hmm. Just breathe into it. This is the body that you have, it's okay. It's okay. When you do that, you have more freedom for acceptance and for changes. 
Well, thank you so much. I think that's a perfect way <laughs> to end the program. Um, thank you so much for yeah, joining us, Dr. You. Terrero. Thank you This for has been me. such a wonderful conversation. And like I said, we could probably talk about yeah. this <laughs> for yeah. hours and hours. Um, but, but thank you again. Um, and thank you for joining us. I hope this was very helpful for you if you were trying to achieve any health and lifestyle goals in your life. Uh, you know, you can watch it over and over again if you yes. missed anything. Uh, but certainly pick up a copy of Dr. Terrero's book. Yes. Um, and and I know you are also open to seeing clients. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's another way that you can, you know, help yourself to sort of, you know, take take the, the decision yeah. to uh, to contact Dr. Terrero. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. I love having these conversations and helping you as you are learning how to be better and achieve your goals. God bless you. We will see you next time.